One more major focus of the president's trip to Japan is how to counter China's huge military buildup in the Pacific. Japan is already committed to doubling its defense budget, a historic departure from longtime policies introduced after the pain of World War II. Elizabeth Farmer has more from Hiroshima. Liz, good morning. Good morning. Japan is America's biggest ally in the Pacific, and it has, as you said, already started to reinvent its military to cope with the new security challenges in this region. Japan's military wants to transform itself into a formidable fighting force. But to get there, it will have to overhaul its pacifist self-image. Japan's constitution was written by American occupation authorities after World War II, and it set out to make sure the country never went to war again. So it actually bans Japan from settling international disputes by force. But China's aggression has changed everything. Last August, it fired five missiles that landed in Japanese waters. And in December, China sailed its aircraft carrier between two of Japan's southern islands. As a result, there's broad support these days for a more muscular military. Naroshiga Michishita is a professor of defense policy in Tokyo. It could have been much more controversial had it not been for uh, China's uh, massive military buildup, its coercive and sometimes even aggressive actions that it's taking uh, in the uh, South China Sea. Japan hosted a defense and security show this spring, yes. which attracted manufacturers of every kind of military equipment, from reconnaissance robots to aircraft. They all have their eye on Japan's plans to double its defense spending by 2027, which will give it the third highest defense budget in the world. Billions will flow to U.S. companies for weapons like Tomahawk missiles and F-35 fighter planes. But all this represents a huge cultural shift. Until now, the Defense Forces, that's the military's official name, have been better known for search and rescue services than combat. Even the latest action-packed recruiting videos aren't convincing young Japanese to enlist in droves. In fact, the most recent drive to sign up 10,000 new service members missed the target by half. Now, here at the G7, the war in Ukraine and Vladimir Putin's recent moves to reposition his nuclear, tactical nuclear weapons are going to be top of the agenda. And, of course, it has special poignancy because Hiroshima, where we are, is where the U.S. dropped the very first atomic bomb back in 1945 at the end of the Second World War. Gail? All right, a good reminder on that. Thank you, Elizabeth Palmer, reporting from Japan.